Alrighty, what's up everybody? Peter Joseph here for another video. Right here on the main channel, Killer of Demon 66. Now, thank you for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel and my other channels, which are down there, you know where, in the description box below. And as always, follow me on social media Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Gotta be real if you're not. You're blocked and you're out of here. And also, don't forget to share the video all over the internet. Most importantly, tap that bell, hit all notifications so you don't miss a, a goddamn video. And if you do, well, we all know what happens. You're SOL, and you know what that means. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So, like, share, subscribe to the video, leave a comment if you want. You don't have to, but if you want. Do it! But, gotta be a real comment, not some schmuck comment, but... Because that, that gets blocked automatically, and if you don't like it, well, too bad. That's that. Alright, this is your first time watching, and you like what you see, you want more, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and welcome to the party, pal! I hope, and pray, you enjoy the ride. If not, take your Metro card and get out of here. Or take your train ticket and get the fuck out of here. Get off at the next stop. But, maybe I just throw you off the train, because this train don't stop for nothing. It ain't stopping anytime soon, my friends. Anytime soon. But we'll see what happens with that. Where we get to get months from now, but we'll see what happens with that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on it's a late night. I'm recording this late at night, and I got five days off, so I, you know, it's Fourth of July weekend, everybody. I hope everybody has a a safe Fourth of July weekend because we start we start July on Saturday and 4th of July on Tuesday so most people will be working tomorrow and then they got the rest of the weekend off and make might go back Monday and then you got to you get off Tuesday but for me five 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 fucking days off because I get holiday pay so I'm happy about that so Tomorrow, well, most of this weekend, I'm just going to chill, watch Money in the Bank on Saturday. Uh, Sunday, i got a party to go to, a little barbecue with my folks and everything. Yeah, Rose will be with me, too. Um, and then, uh, pretty much Monday, I'm not doing much Monday besides, you know, cleaning the house, because it needs to be cleaned. And then Tuesday, you know, shooting off, well, I'm not going to shoot off fireworks, but, you know, Tuesday is, uh, you know, July 4th, and, uh, might go to a, might go to, might go out and, uh, go to another barbecue with, at, with my, with my family, and, um, watch the, watch NXT, uh, while, uh, you know, the missus and my mom, and maybe my dad might watch it, but he might watch the Mets, uh, Mets, good. don't talk to me about the Mets till, uh, next year, okay, because the Mets are done. They're done. 95 games out of first place, 9 games out of the wild card. I mean, it's over. It's right the first half of the season, and we still got a long way to go. 81 more games to go, Met fans. So, if you want to be in therapy, you know, therapy begins tomorrow, tomorrow well, in, in like a few hours, because this team is done. It is cooked. Stick a fork in it. It's done. There's no way, no how, this team is going to come back from nine games back in the wild card. And even make a run at the wild card. So they're tragic number right now. For the division, pff, the division's done. I mean, they're like eight, 18, 19 games out. Forget it. Good night. But the wild card, that tragic number is starting to pff, go down pretty damn quick. So. 
Is it football yet? No, not, not yet, but, you know. July 19th, actually, is when the Jets, uh, start with training camp and everything. And then, uh, the Hall of Fame game uh, is coming up. The Jets will be part of that Hall of Fame game, the first preseason game against the Browns. That's being Canton, Ohio. So, we'll see Rodgers for a little bit. Not, not all the game, because, you know, preseason don't count shit. But we're, 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 all, we're a couple months away from football season, and I hope and pray, you know, the Niners have a great season. Brock Purdy coming back. <sighs> Hopefully you don't get hurt, because then we have to look at either Trey Lance or Sam Darnold. Oh, do I do? I do? You know, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. And the Jets, I think, I have an amazing year with Vagis and his discount double check. Maybe giving the Jets their first division title in a goddamn long time. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. And we move on. But like I said, hopefully everybody has a great 4th of July weekend. Don't blow yourselves up if you're lighting fireworks. Well, some of you should be blown up, but I digress on that. Um, but just be safe and be well. Yeah, no, that's it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, on this very late, oh, yeah, yeah, very late night, and I'm recording this very late, and I, I am going to bed soon because uh, I just took my sedative because I'm on new medication now, so the pill, the, this new pill I'm on, <laughs> knocks me the fuck out. I don't even have to get punched by Rosa to get knocked out or have great amazing sex, but you know, this pill, forget it. Holy shit. I took it. I didn't wake up till like 12.30 yet, as if you, yes, yesterday. And I was tired as fuck the entire day. I'm still tired now. I'm trying to I'm trying to get wired, but, you know, the sedative's starting to kick in. So, I'm gonna be, after I finish this video, I'm going to bed. And I don't know what time I'm waking up tomorrow. But I got the day off, so I don't care. But I got I got air, I got errands to run. I got the house to clean. Could get ready for my Fourth of July weekend, and now uh, that's pretty much it. All right, enough talk about that, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for your Ring of Honor TV review for June the 29th, two thousand twenty-three. You're watching this on June the thirtieth, two thousand twenty-three. So let's get into it. Let's not waste any more any more more time than I already wasted. All right, so. Tonight, Ring of Honor was a pretty decent show. 11 matches, two and a half hour show. So let's get into it. Alright, so we start off with Tony Khan, man, and Stokely Hathaway. One, um, two thirds of the board of directors, along with Jerry Lynn, uh, basically run down the card and welcome us to the show. And that's pretty much it. Alright, then we start with match number one, a very quick squash match. We had La Faction de Ignobles. That's, uh, well, that's with Bruce. Well, we haven't seen Bruce in a while, and he may be going to WWE land. I hope not, well, because I'll ruin him. I'll tell you that much, he goes to WWE. So long, farewell, you can hang out with Dragon Lee, and that's it. But on NXT, you ain't going anywhere. As soon as Vince... Gets a hold of you. I'm gonna mold you into something. And if you don't like it, you're fired. Go back to AEW, you know? You work for Vince and if for a rental rental for or for a couple of years, you're gone after that. Because he don't give a shit. But in any case, we have Jalistico and Preston Vance along with Jose Alapino on a stick. The assistant at ringside. They take on two jobbers named Mark Wheeler and Vikram Pashar. Where did they get these people from? These guys from Chicago? Were they from Canada? Oh, by the way, Ian Rick are boring and the pasta Caprice Coleman at ring at ringside. Uh, so anyway, yeah, Preston Vance and Jalisco get the win after. Uh, Preston hit the discus lariat. Bing, bang, boom. Good night. 
And that's all I got to say about that. So I gave that 2.25 out of 5 stars. And we're off and running on Ring of Honor TV. I think this is episode number 17. I don't know what number it is, but we'll just call it Ring of Honor TV for now. I, I lost count of, I lost count of ep uh, how many episodes this is. But anyway, we move on. Alright, match number two. A little bit longer match. A pretty good match. We have the Righteous of Dutch and Vincent, along with Stu Grayson at ringside. They take on the remnants of the Dark Order of the Beaver Boys, Alex Reynolds and Johnny Huggy. John Silver. I uh, believe Evil Uno was at ringside. Pretty back and forth match. But it's been a bad week for the for the Dark Order. I mean, they lost to the the Hung Bucks on Dynamite, and then they start yelling at freaking Hangman Adam Page for no apparent reason, and then Johnny Hungy thinks he's so cool, like starts beating the shit out of Hangman Page. So I guess the Dark Order are turning back to heels, but nobody cares. Was there? Done. Get him. Just get him out of Ring of uh, Ring, Get him out of Ring of Honor. Get him out of AEW too. Just put him on collision. I don't care. But you know. But in any case, uh, back and forth match. Like I said, uh, Stu Grayson uh, came in behind the referee's back, hit Reynolds with a running knee strike, uh, and then and then Vincent rolled up Alex Reynolds with a fruit roll up. One, two, three. They get the win. And it continued to give the Dark Order problems. And that's pretty much it. So we'll see what happens with with that. So I gave the match two and a half out of five stars. After the match, uh, they continued to beat down on on, on um, the Beaver Boys. And then uh, Evo Uno was not at ringside, I apologize. He came in after the match. So I, I went ahead. So Evo Uno comes in with a chair to break that up. But Stu Grayson gets in Evo Uno's face. And she's like, what are you doing to my friends, you asshole? You know? And then Evil Uno is like, everybody's like, hit him! Hit him! Hit him! Hit, me, hit your former Super Smash Brother partner to turn on you! And he's like, I can't, I can't do it! Fuck! And that's pretty much it. And Alex Reynolds got pissed at Evil Uno. He's like, why did you hit him, you fucking asshole? It's gonna happen, but not right now. Not right now. We wait a little bit, and that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll probably see that match, I would think, as Death Before Dishonor, Stu Grayson and Evil Uno in a point as fuck match. But I digress on that. We move on with that. Alright, so like I said, two and a half out of five stars. Okay, match number three. We go to the women, and we have Layla Gray, part of, uh, you know, with. Jade Cargill. We haven't seen... What happened to Jade? What happened to Jade Cargill? We haven't seen her in a while. Did she hurt? Or they just don't have anything for her? I mean, after... After her losing at 60 and 0, or 61 and 0, and then loses the TBS title to Chris Statlander, we haven't seen her in, oh, like a month. What the fuck happened to Jade? Well, I think we know, but... In any case, Lady Gray takes on Diamante. A pretty decent match. Uh, Mark Sterling at ringside. You know, smart Mark, douchebag Mark Sterling at ringside. It caused a distraction as Diamante hit a shotgun drop kick. Goes to the pin and Mark Sterling broke up the pin by putting Lady's foot on the bottom rope. But that didn't stop Diamante. She hits Layla with the crossroads. Hmm, I wonder where she got that from. Yeah, Cody! People using your move, Cody! MDK all day, Cody! But we move on with that. So, she hits Crossroads, one, two, three. She has to win, and nobody gave a flying fuck. So, 2.25 out of 5 slots with that. Alright, then we go backstage, where we have the Ring of Honor champion, Claudio Castagnoli, talking about what's next for him, for, uh for the Ring of Honor world title and his lack of challenges as of late, being basically everybody, uh, you forget Eddie Kicks is coming after you. 
at Death Before Dishonor. And then Chuck E.T. of the Best Friends, give me a hug. He comes in, says, I'm ready, I want a title shot. And then he walks off. And then Claudia's like, I'll offer him a title shot, but he first needs to beat me in an in a Eliminator match. And uh, would, be, would even be willing to scrap the 10 minute time limit. So we'll see what happens with that. And we move on. So I give that two and a half out of five stars. That's it. All right. After that, match number, I believe it's match number four. Six-man tag team action, trios action. We have Shane Taylor Productions of the man himself, Shane Taylor, and the work horseman. Say his name, and he appears. I believe in Anthony Henry. No, not Joe Henry. Well, he's cool too, but it sounds better when you say Anthony Henry. Anyway, Anthony Henry and J. D. Drake. Uh, and Gringo Loco. Actually, it was a uh, one, two. Actually, yeah, it was an eight-man tag, not a trios match. Uh, Gringo Loco taking on Commander El Hijo del Vikingo, the AAA Mega Champion, and the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions, Bray Phoenix and my good friend Pentagon Zero. Zero. And uh, pretty much it. All this was taped in Chicago, by the way. Alright, so very good match. Lots of high flying flippy gibbity news by uh, a lot of people. But we get near the end and. Of uh, El Vikingo and Commander hit a pair of flippy dibbity doos on the on the floor. Well, in the ring, uh, the ring of tag team champions, double team Anthony Henry, poor you. Uh, then he hit a double super kick on him. Then he finished him up with a fear factor. One, two, three. Uh, the Luchadors get the win. And uh, that's pretty much it. Gave the match three out of five stars. we we'll move on. All right, then we go backstage where we have the Ring of Honor TV champion, Samoa Joe. About to face CM Punk pretty soon. I have to, we're after collision after Joe gets done with Roddy. You know, you know that's coming next week. Next weekend, I should say. Uh, anyway, he uh, he's talking about what he's going to be doing with the Ring of Honor TV title. And then he gets interrupted by Stoke the Hathaway. You, why you interrupt him? Uh... And he's like, well, I'm running Ring of Honor right now because Tony Khan gave him the keys to the kingdom, basically. Not that kingdom, but you know what I mean. It's like, oh, you can run backstage. Okay, go ahead. Do whatever you want. So Joe's like, you may run Ring of Honor, but you can't run me, sir. I run you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I wouldn't mess with some old Joe. I'm just saying. So I give that three to five stars. Let me move on with that. All right, then we go to our next match, another squash match. Tag team match, we had Big Bill, Big Bill Cass, so Big Cass. He's seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. He sees up with Lee Moriarty as they take on the team of Tarek, or Tariq, and Kalu. I guess they're from New Japan. I mean, it was, no, it was in Chicago, so... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who these guys are, but anyway, they got beat like two government mules as uh, Moriarty caught Tariq in the Border City Scratch and um, tapped him out pretty damn quick. So, didn't give two fucks and I gave it a dud. Zero. Nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see. Let me move on. All right, after that, we go to... Now we go to a trios match. The Ring of Honor six-man tag team champions in action. Uh, for the titles, actually. We have Los Ingolabres de Hepon of Shingo. Hidomo Takahashi, the IWGP Junior Champion. And Bushi. As we saw, Naito. Uh, at Forbidden Door. That was cool. Uh, anyway, they, talk, they take on the embassy, my good friend, Prince Nana, leading them out, the real prince of the prophecy. Uh, Brian Cage and the Gates of Agony, Toa Leona and Bishop Khan! I know not Khan! So, pretty good match. Uh, you, we, we knew that Los Inganables, they hate Pong, was not going to win. Not going to take them back to Japan. 
But anyway, uh, Bushi sprayed the black mist in Brian Cage's face. Uh, on the out, I think it was on the outside. Back in the ring, the Gates of Agony give him a double team face first slam. One, two, three. And they retain the six man tag team belts. And that's pretty much it. So I gave that three out of five stars. We go backstage uh, in our next segment with United Empire. We have Kyle Fletcher said I bought two of his beautiful friends from New Japan, meaning uh, TJ Perkins and Jeff Cobb. We saw them at Forbidden Door during the pre-show. Uh, so they boast about, well, they boast about, you know, the, the group and nobody in Ring of Honor is able to be on their level. Hmm. We'll see what happens with that. So I give that two and a half out of five stars. All right, then our next match, El Desperado taking on Willie Mack. Pretty decent match. El Desperado gets the win. After he pulls Willie Mack into a backslide, kind of disorients him a little bit, kind of throws off his momentum. Then he catches him with the Pinche Loco, which is a double underhook face buster. Almost like the pedigree, but one, two, three, he gets the win. A pretty good match. I gave three out of five stars. That's that. All right, and we go to another tag team match. We have the House of Torture. No, n- no relation to the House of Black, but it's Yujiro Takahashi and Sho, member of Sho and Yo, back in the day, three, three, uh, Rapongi 3.0, whatever it was called. And uh, yes, we have Yujiro without Pieter, you son of a bitch. You don't bring her to America. That's why she was in my bedroom last night, my friend. Because you can't take care of your woman, even though you're the pimp of New Japan. Or even though that was uh, Bad Luck Folly. That's Bad Luck Folly's bitch. Said, said that you, you can't even control your woman there, Bad Luck Folly. Because she's with me now, so. Anyway, we move on. Alright, so they take on Rapagi Vice. Oh, man, show. Hanging at show going against his mentor, Rocky Romero. Oh, yeah. And Trent Barretta. Wow. So this was a pretty good match. Uh, Rapongi Vice get the win after they hit Strong Zero on Takahashi, who always gets the fucking pin. The guy never wins. The only thing he wins is fucking Pieter, and that's it. Sad. Fucking sad. Went a, went a long time. I don't know why this match went really long. But still, Rapongi Vice gets the win, matching a two and a half out of five stars. After the match... Well, the House of Torture got a little pissy-pissy, and they attack Rocky Romero and Trent Barretta until uh, my good friend, the all-international champion, Oh, you Cassidy, how you doing? He make, walks in and makes the save, and then after that, we get the good old big hug. And you gotta give the people what they want. Get the big pullback, like Okada and everything. So, you give the crowd what you want, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, it was nice to see Takahashi and Cho... But, man, I really wanted to see Pieter on TV, not on New Japan television, you know, shit like that. Where we, where we see her every once in a blue moon when when you watch it on New Japan uh, World and everything. But, you know, if you want to watch her, you have to watch her YouTube channel, which she hasn't done a video in a while, as far as I know. But, you know, or you can, you can, uh, you can follow on social media. But... You know, she's a busy woman, if you know what I mean. But I digress. We move on. Uh, alright. Alright, we gotta speed it up now. We move on. Alright, after that, we go to, um, a six-man tag team match. We have the United Empire, Kyle Fletcher, TJ Perkins, and Jeff Cobb. Taking on the team of Christopher Daniels, a fallen angel, Darius Martin of Top Flight, and Action and Greddy. Pretty decent match. Shocking victory by Christopher Daniels, Darius Martin, and Action and Dreddy as they get the shocking win after TJ Perkins uh, comes in, hits a spinning DDT, then a, a splash off the top for a near fall. Christopher Daniels uh, catches TJ Perkins with a forearm in the corner, and then Action and Dreddy and Darius Martin hit a double team slam, one, two, three, to get the upset victory. Wow, I didn't think they were going to win because. You know, United Empire have been on a hot streak, especially a guy named Ocean Spray. I think we all know who that is. Match of the year, Mr. Will Ocean Spray, the new IWGP United States Champion. 
That match with Kenny, oh, amazing match, amazing. I don't think anything can top it this year. I know we got a long way to go, but that's match of the year right now. And we move on with that. All right, then we go backstage with Lexi and the kingdom of Mike Bennett, his hot as fuck wife, Maria Canellas Bennett, and Matt, I'm Matt Taven. If you don't like Matt Taven, you're Melvin. If you don't know what a Melvin is, look it up. But anyway, they're there, and they crash ECW. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, try, to stir, try to stir up trouble between Jerry Lynn and Stokely Hathaway. Jerry Lynn comes in and makes a match between the Kingdom and Maria next week against the Infantry and Trish Adora. So this has been going on for a, a, lo a few weeks now. Now we're finally getting... Maria Kanellis in the in the ring, I believe for the first time on well of the new Ring of Honor, but so that match is is official for next week, so we got that. So something's gotta give because uh, the Kingdom is pissed, you know, really pissed off at Cherry Lynn. But why would you be mad at Cherry Lynn? But just saying. And we move on with that. How much time we got left? Eh, we got time. Good, we got enough time. All right, and after that, we go to a Proving Ground match for the Ring of Honor, or actually, we go to a Ring of Honor Women's Championship Proving Ground match, 10-minute uh, time limit. Uh, if the uh, opponent wins, they get a title shot. If they lose, they get nothing. So, we have, we have the champion, Athena, who is 27-0 since winning that belt. Just be basically beating Hammonagers right now. And um, she takes on Casey Spinelli, who we, if you don't know who she is, she wrestled in Impact for a little bit, various indie promotions. Now she's in Ring of Honor. Uh, pff, another win for Athena. And really, it was nothing to talk about except for, you know, Ian and Rick are boring and, 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 uh, Caprice Coleman talking about Mike Tyson and, and Buster Douglas from like, what was that, 93, 94? Got something, got, got, to, got to talk about something because this match was garbage. <laughs> not, not, I mean, not saying anything bad about Casey Spinelli, but come on. You're fighting Athena. I mean, seriously. Can anybody beat Athena right now? I don't see anybody. She's So we're getting basically the Ring of Honor version of Jade Cargill. With Athena. Because she is 28 and 0 since she won that belt. And basically, everybody she's beat is not really on her level. Who is going to beat her? I don't know. I'm not. Well, that. Besides that, maybe. But. <laughs> but in any case, I don't know who beats Athena. I don't know who. I, I was thinking Mercedes Martinez coming back. I doubt that. Uh, I could go as far as may maybe saying uh, Mandy, Mandy, I was going to say Mandy Rose, Mandy the Young coming back, because we haven't seen Mandy in a long time. What happened to you, Mandy? The, the, the queen of Coney Island. She's, she's from Brooklyn, by the way. I haven't seen her in a long time. I don't even know if she's wrestling anymore. I think she's just maybe an ambassador to Ring of Honor. I don't know what she's doing. It's not going to be Sumi Sakai, the first women Ring of Honor Women's Champion, when they brought the belt back. Not going to be Sumi because she's retired. As far as I know, she's retired. And it's not going to be my 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 good friend, my sweetheart Kelly Klein, because she's I don't know, she's out of it. It's not going to be Angelina Lowe because like she's wrestling in different uh a different promotion right now. I mean, who's it going to be? Mercedes Monet? No. I would love it for it to be, but I think Mercedes is, you know, healing up from her hor uh, really horrific ankle injury. So, I don't know who beats Athena. I think she's just going to keep going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny until somebody beats her. I'm hoping it's somebody at death before dishonor, but at this rate, she I think she's going to go a full year as champ. All the way to Final Battle 2023. Which should be in New York there, Tony Khan. But we'll see. 
We move on. All right. After that, uh, after the match, Athena attacks Casey Spinell with a drop kick on the floor, and insult the injury, and that's that. And we move on. All right. Then we go to your main event of the evening: another proving ground match, non-title match. Uh, Chucky T has to beat Claudio to get a Ring of Honor title shot. Pretty decent match. Uh, no Trent. Uh, Rocky Romero and Trent came to ringside near the end of the match to encourage Chucky T. And he gave it his all, but he ran into a buzzsaw like like Claudio. And um, after uh, Claudio tried for the neutralizer, Taylor escaped. Uh, but Claudio came back with a big time clothesline. Then he picks up Chucky T. Hits the Ricola bomb. One, two, three. Well, there goes your title shot. Chances there. Chucky T. As Claudio gets the win. Uh, pretty decent match. Okay, three out of five stars. And by the way, Athena's match again with Dud because it was a short match. And um, that's pretty much it. So that is it for Ring of Honor TV as we're rolling on to Death Before This Honor coming your way at the end of July, July 21st, I believe. So we got that coming up. And that's pretty much it. So a solid edition of Ring of Honor TV. I gave it six and a half out of ten stars. Let me know what you guys think down below. If you wish, if you can do a video reply, if you wish, you can do your own video. That's pretty much it. All right, so that's that's it. Once again, six and a half out of ten stars for the show, and we'll see what happens next week on Ring of Honor TV. And that's it. All right, I'm gonna get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to sleep. Uh, tomorrow, I got a load of videos to come. I gotta do. I got NXT. I got AEW to do. I, I am so backlogged because I've been so busy lately with uh, other things. Um, but I'm going to try to get back on track because I got uh, next week and the following week after that. And then I'm going to be off for two weeks starting July 16th uh, for my mental health break. And just, you know, just a quick vacation. And then I'll be, I'll be gone from videos um, for about two weeks. I, re I will be back June the 3rd. Uh, July, it's not June. July the 30th. With, um, I would do two, um, try to do two videos that night. Uh, uh, NXT, Great American Bash predictions, because it was pay per views the same night. Uh, and then I might do the review after that, or I might do it, uh, the day after, but we'll see what happens with that. But like I said, got two more weeks to go, and then I will be on vacation, and for my mental health break, and, uh, it'll be a real break. It's not gonna be fake, but it is what it is. But if you think it's fake, you're fake too. And that's pretty much it. All right, I got to go, ladies and gentlemen. I will be back tomorrow with AEW and NXT reviews. And then get you ready for SmackDown tomorrow night. And that's it. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'm Peter Joseph signing off. Go to bed, you sons of bitches. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Peace.